If you're about to launch your product on ClickBank, you'll want to watch this video. We're going to be covering a quality control checklist that you can be using to make sure things go without a hitch. Let's dive in. Okay, for context, I've seen a lot of ClickBank offers launch. I've been behind a lot of them. I've been working with clients on a lot of them. And I've seen them go very well, and I've seen them go very poorly. <laughs> and there's some things you can do to make sure that your launch goes off without a hitch. This is for you if you are about to launch, if you're getting ready to launch, you've got the online setup pieces. I'll give you some more links and stuff like that if you don't even know how to get set up on ClickBank. This is just that point between, hey, products are approved in ClickBank, and we're ready for traffic. This is the, the tightening up you need to be doing. It's not fun work, but it's very important work to make sure that things go smoothly, affiliates get paid, tracking's working, everything's integrated. All these little T's we're gonna cross and I's we're gonna dot are coming at you right now. Okay, so before you send traffic to your new offer that you've set up on ClickBank, I want you to do these things. There's about nine steps here with some different bullets. We're gonna cover what they are and why they're important. First is proofread and check the copy on your site. <laughs> Seems simple, a lot of people don't do it. Things you wanna do is make sure that the copy that is live on the site that you're about to send traffic to is the same approved copy you got approved by ClickBank, right? A lot of times you might submit some copy, compliance will go through and go, hey, you need to change this, way, this thing and this thing and this thing. You make those changes, but that change copy might not make it to the web developer. They might have a different file and they've put up a new piece of copy. It's a very easy way to kind of get into hot water with ClickBank without meaning to by uploading the wrong copy or kind of letting that roll. So make sure the copy is the same as that what was approved. Make sure all the headlines are correct. Make sure it's the actual copy that you're convinced will convert. Make sure it's, uh, especially if you've done testing, make sure it's the right copy. This sounds bare bones here, but you would be shocked to know how many qualified marketers actually make this mistake and don't check this kind of stuff and realize, oh shoot, we used our wrong headline and we could have had this converting at 30% better. And then make sure in your copy that all the logic related to pricing and all that kind of stuff matches up. I've seen like, oh, well, we were gonna launch this at a $47 supplement bottle that we started with, but now we're gonna do 69, but we accidentally used the $47 verbiage in the VSL and the so it's, the things don't make sense. It gets really confusing for the customer. Make sure all the logic matches up for the actual offer and the pricing. Okay, two, this is uh, going right in line with that, but watch the VSL if you have one, <laughs> like all the way through. Make sure it's lining up with the copy that you expect it to. Again, video editors might have gotten the wrong file. Things got The wrong video could have been uploaded. You don't want to start off on the wrong foot with compliance with the wrong VSL going. That's maybe more aggressive than what you got approved. So make sure that the VSL is accurate make sure things are popping up on the page at the right time if you say hey if you like if you have a limited release buy button make sure that's popping up when you say it is <laughs> kind of fact check and quality check what's happening in the vsl make sure the slides are accurate make sure it's the right file and if you're not going to be doing this make sure someone on your team has the hey this is the file it should be make sure you're watching it make sure the audio is good on desktop on headphones make sure the volumes aren't too loud make sure the auto plays working if you have it all this kind of stuff this is their time to fact check and make sure that the main sale element of that video sales letter is working as best as it should be take the time to do this okay three getting into some more a little more technical stuff here this is where you want to make sure all the pay links from front end through all your upsell flows are accurate and working. Um, again, we've got links for you on like the launch checklist that ClickBank provides, um, which is kind of will help you kind of make sure you navigate and actually make the right pay links. If you want to be going through the order form and through the sales pages, making sure that when you the order form loads, it's the correct product image, it's the correct price point, it's the right order bump if you have one, it's the right shipping profile, all these little things can get missed and they cause friction if you're trying to scale and kind of get traffic going. So make sure you're doing it on the front end and kind of avoid a lot of these initial tripping blocks. Um, a little thing here is that a lot of parameters have to be added to the ClickBank pay link, like the ClickBank flow ID, the item number, the order bump, the exit pop if there is one, right? Make sure all those little parameters are correct. Right? If you're expecting something to happen and it isn't, it's probably because there's an incorrect parameter matching up to your ClickBank profile, like in the actual settings in your ClickBank account. So make sure that 
those are all accurate. And a good way to test shipping is to make sure you're using a VPN from different geos. Because right, if you're expecting to ship this product to Great Britain for $7 more than US shipping, you want to make sure that it's accurately reflected on the order form and so that you're not eating uh, unnecessary costs. I've seen people scale thousands of units, realizing all of a sudden, oh shoot, we're going negative on 20% of our orders that are international because their shipping profile was wrong which you could have easily avoided if you tested beforehand. And a little pro tip here, um, I highly recommend you use the redirect path Chrome extension. I think they have extensions for other browsers, but it actually just shows you, if you click on a link, it'll show you in a little tab that you can click on, hey, this is the URL that you just went through. And it's a very easy way to kind of check this kind of stuff without copy pasting little pay links all the time um, out of the browser. You can just click on a link, see where you went through, click on the next link, see where you went through and copy from there. Saves a lot of time. Number four, if you've got order bumps, make sure they're added to the initial product, make sure they're loading on the initial product and make sure the order form is showing it correctly with the right text and verbiage. Five, make sure the order form looks the way you expect it to, <laughs> right? The default ClickBank order form is good enough. Um, the basic customized order form you can do is what I recommend everyone does. Um, so what you wanna be doing is making sure is the are the images correct, is the color correct? Um, are the pricing and things like that correct? Is it look good on mobile and desktop? You want it to be not seamless, but you want it to make sure when you someone clicks from your sales page to the order form that it, the branding matches. It's still going to have ClickBank branding, of course, on the order form, but you want to make sure that the customer's like, oh yeah, this is where I should be. Six, okay. Analytics and tracking pixels. Are they added to the right pages throughout your flow to the ClickBank side of things on the order form and thank you page if you're using those? Our Google Analytics setup, right? This is your chance to really test all this before affiliates are sending traffic and you're trying to tie in where everything's coming from. So where are or where is it working? Have people go through on different browsers, different geos, all that kind of stuff. Make sure that you're seeing the analytics flow through the full funnel like you need it. Uh, if there's third party tools like Facebook or different kind of integrations for volume or red track, are those tracking correctly? So make sure that that's all set up and working and kind of stress test that as best you can. You'll probably find some little things when scale really starts to hit, but you wanna make sure that you've got it 90% of the way there, if not 100%. Okay, lucky number seven. This is, in my opinion, the most important one. You've done a lot of testing now. You've tested pay links. You've looked at kind of different things here. This is where you really want to test the funnel like a customer would. You've kind of tested maybe unique pages at this point. But what I want you to do here is you ClickBank gives you test credit card information. I want you to give this to some people on your team, some friends and family, um, ask them to record on Loom if they're tech savvy enough to do that. But just have them go through your funnel like a customer would. Again, you've got test credit card information. They don't actually have to buy the product. But what they're going to be doing here is doing almost like a quality control from you from a user experience. You want a user experience test this. Are they going through and getting confused by the verbiage on your offer or the verbiage of the upsell? Do they not really know what they're reading or buying? Like, are they getting where are they getting lost? Not so much on a tech level, but a user experience level. For context, we've seen a lot of vendors uh, struggle with refund rates on upsells because customers think that, oh, if I buy this upsell, I'm getting another 12 bottles or another six bottles. And really it's like a full 18 bottle package on top of six bottles or something that they got. So it can be very confusing if the verbiage isn't right. So what you wanna be doing is making sure that's all working. The other thing too, is you wanna make sure that the, they're getting the product information after the purchase. If it's like an online course, do they get their login? Do they get the access to it? Is it all making sense on all the upsells they took? You wanna make sure that the customer journey from start to product access is as tight as possible and makes sense. You, you, the offer owner and your team are probably too close to it. They kind of know what it should do and know what it should be. Even if it's not exactly doing that, they'll make it work because they, oh, this should just work this way and they'll kind of just breeze through it. So you want to, again, give this test credit card and kind of initial tracking link to someone that is cold to the offer. They haven't seen it before. Could be an industry friend, but just have them go through and act like it's a real purchase, that they're a real customer and see where they're getting lost and confused and really take their feedback uh, candidly and really optimize your 
journey for that. You'll save a ton of time and money on doing this kind of thing. A lot of people don't do this, and it really makes some friction points with refund rates, with product deliverability, all kinds of things down the road, and even upsell take rates, right, if things are confusing. So it can really make the offer a good offer, a great offer by focusing on this customer journey. Okay, we're getting close to the end here. So this is number eight. <laughs> so um, what you want to be doing here is making sure all the page versions look good across different devices, right? Uh, start with mobile. Most things are coming through on mobile now. So look at mobile traffic, look at, you know, different phone types, Android, uh, iPhone, the bigger phones, the smaller phones, then go to desktop. And lastly, check tablets. Um, desktop is bigger than tablets for, um, but you still want to make sure that Every device type looks good and things act the way they should. Um, little things like auto play and pop ups and stuff can look a lot different on mobile. Um, you know, is the video loading full screen vertical versus sideways? Are you kind of doing that kind of hack? But make sure that things are accurate and working that way and work with your dev if it's not. And then number nine, last one, you want to get your initial affiliates um, and kind of your different traffic sources, the tracking links they need and get kind of rolling with it. Um, and you want to be watching very carefully for any kind of issues that pop up with integrations. Obviously, you've stress tested this already yourself, but when it's the initial live traffic and real traffic for inflits coming through, you want to have kind of your ear to the ground and make sure that you're, hey, is there any little issue, any little questions from them? Do they have their tracking pixels they need placed on your funnel if you're doing that for them? Right. Is everything working seamlessly? And if there's any kind of have people on point to fix issues quickly if things are still happening. This is your chance to really start off on the right foot with affiliates and make sure you're cracking at it. So be all hands on deck when you've got initial traffic coming through. Okay, so again, if you wanna review this checklist, there's a lot more detail on the blog. Check out the link in the description below where you can also download it. I'm gonna hand it off to your team. Make sure they're going through this process and checking things off or just so you can kinda of make sure you're hitting all the steps. Um, we've also got a link there to ClickBank's launch checklist, which again is more of the setup phase. Like how do you actually set up a product on ClickBank? That's the, what they offer. This is more for, hey, you're ready to scale. Make sure it's actually ready for traffic <laughs> and everything from there. Um, and if you've got any questions, leave questions in the comments below. If this has added value to you, I hope you leave a like and subscribe and a little bell notification, all that good stuff so you come around for more videos. And thanks so much for watching. Happy scaling. Cheers.